I mean, at this point, it's just not fair how amazing this show is. What's going on to all my Wooden Sound fans out there? And welcome back to my channel, Movie Files. Elliot back again, breaking down Season 1, Episode 8. An episode that really highlights family being a burden, facing against your heroes. And if you want to be a championship winner, you got to be a killer. We're going to be discussing that and so much more in tonight's spoiler review. But before we get into the discussion, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. You all are new to the channel and love early movie reviews, TV breakdowns, and live streams, will come and join the community today by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. As you all can see on the screen now, if you enjoy what I had to say about this eighth episode, well, make sure you're liking this review and also sharing it. But more importantly, speaking of sharing, share your thoughts in the comments, favorite moments, least favorite moments. What were some of the themes you took away from this episode? And is this your favorite? Is it somewhere in the middle? Or did you not really vibe with this episode? Let's discuss that and so much more in the comment section. So for me personally, I'm going to sound like a broken record at this point as I covered all this season this far. And every single week I say, well, you know what? Yeah, this is my favorite episode. Oh, you know what? The next week, this is my favorite episode. Well, hey, this is my favorite episode of the season so far. The writing's impeccable. The performances are amazing. I love the arcs. I love the themes that we're able to take away from the show. Again, we're going to talk about the family being a burden, how you have to face against your heroes sometimes, and brotherly love, and all the different stuff that we got in this episode. The stuff that Dr. Buss confronts about his mom, Magic having to become a killer. I mean, there's just so much amazing stuff going on in the show. This episode to me just pretty much submitted the show as a nomination for Best Dramatic Series for an Emmy and hell. It might even win. If they can close this show out with the next two episodes with the type of incredibleness that we've gotten so far... This show is going to be winning that award. But hey, we're going to get into my thoughts here in a second. I love this episode. I'm going to give you my reasons why. But again, let me know your first impressions. But full spoilers ahead as we break down the episode. Opening up what I consider to be a very impressive freeze frame moment when we see Dr. Bus walking through the crowd as they're playing the Blazers. And he's discussing that records need to be broken and that there aren't limits to certain things. But more importantly, the Showtime Lakers are on a roll. They're currently 22-5 and five since beating the Celtics. We're in the 1980s. We're only two days away from the All-Star game, and we got a lot to look forward to as we learn that Magic has made the All-Star game, but his peers voted for Bird, and I think he had like 10 more votes, and we know that's going to be fueling Magic throughout this episode because he wants to become a killer. He wants to win, as we'll talk about a little bit later, but moving on, we see that Spencer is dealing with a knee injury, and we see Pat Riley showing him that your body, they, they have limits and you got to keep healthy but what I loved about this scene and we're going to talk more about Pat Riley because he was just Adrian Brody is killing that performance but I love how they're showing us number one the relationship that Pat Riley built amongst these players if you all don't know I'm a big Pat Riley fan one of the best coaches of all time he was known as what they call a player's coach which means that you know there's certain coaches that are great at the X's and O's they can you know win the game on just being very fundamental to the game of basketball but there's also those coaches that can do that but also develop a relationship with their players and you can see that very early on very highlighted very good in this particular scene but unfortunately this relationship is going to have a little bit of friction when we get to some things going on a little bit later let me know what you all thought about that moment really highlighting the importance of Pat Riley and how he can connect to players moving on from that moment we see that the Lakers are leading the Western Conference in the rankings but we see that Boston's right up there in the east and the clash of the Titans is inevitable but it's also important to know that right now this winning basketball is they're on the path to a championship, which is something that I look forward to seeing in this show. But surprise, surprise, guess who's back on their feet is no other than Jack. And this is inevitable. He was going to come back and shake some things up as we see. And I thought that this was just executed perfectly. Paul and Pat, they have won 31 games right now. They feel like this is their team. But we see that Jack is back and making decisions about Spencer's playing time. And we can see that there's a difference in opinion. There's different coaching philosophies, but more importantly, Jack will be back with the team. He will be traveling with the team in this very episode, and we got a lot to discuss with that plot there. As we move on to Jack tells Paul that family only and Pat's job has come to an end as Jack doesn't want him to be a part of the coaching staff. And when we get that scene between Pat and we get Paul and the stress and everything going on, 
absolute perfection. But let's move on and talk about what the show lacks in basketball scenes. It makes up tenfold for the story, for building these characters, for building the plot. I really appreciate this show giving us the behind the scenes of how the, how the Lakers became the Showtime Lakers. I'm enjoying all of this character development and becoming the dynasty. But time to talk about some family as we see Jenny Buss learns that Mrs. Buss time is ticking and she wants to go out on her own terms. And this is where we see that she wants to keep the secret from just between those two and not tell her father, which unfortunately we'll be talking about that a little bit later. In comes the all-star celebrations as we see that Magic and Cookie arrive and there's a job opportunity for Cookie to move to LA. We see see Magic's first response is he doesn't seem too happy, but he says, you know what? I'm excited for you to come to LA. I'm excited for us to kind of see what we can do with this relationship. And unfortunately, ooh, we're going to talk about relationships and decisions by Magic a little bit later. But it's in this next moment here that we finally get to meet Doc, aka Julius Irving, which a little fun fact, I actually had the opportunity to meet him in person when I used to live in Atlanta. Great individual. And I mean, come on, he's one of the best basketball players of all time. And I really enjoyed his influence on this episode. But we see that Magic definitely looked up to him, and this is a moment where we talk about Cookie. Hey, who's who's the young lady here? Oh, this ain't my girlfriend. Oh, this is just Cookie. You're messing up, Magic. You literally just two seconds ago said you wanted her to move here, and now you're introducing her as just Cookie and not who she really is. My man's got a lot to learn, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. But moving on, we see that Mr. Unhappy Jerry West, who we haven't really got a lot of since the beginning of the season, but he has a really good moments in this episode, and this being one of them, the trophy talking to him, and the theme that we got going on with Jerry West is his happiness, or I should say lack of happiness. As we move on to the team is watching the All-Star game and we see Pat addresses the situation between the assistant coaches, between him and Paul. And unfortunately, Paul, as you notice, every time this gets brought up in this episode, I gotta go to the bathroom. I gotta go to the bathroom. He just doesn't want to confront the truth. He doesn't want to face his brother and, you know, what we got with Jack and now his kind of almost new brother of a certain extent with Pat. He doesn't want to tell him that he's no longer going to be a part of this coaching staff. And that's tearing him up from the inside. As we move on to Jack and Spencer having a talk outside about his men's increasing for the playoff run and him being a focal point, a part of the offense, but also he tells him, you're secure. Don't listen. Don't worry about any of those trade rumors, which was a surprise to Spencer because if we remember earlier in the episode, he's having this one-on-one -on -one conversation with Pat. He has Pat Riley in his house. Hold on. I thought we were supposed to be, you know, really close to player and coach relationship. I can trust you. Well, unfortunately, Jack kind of screws that up when he tells him this news. And speaking of Spencer, he confronts Pat and he talks about the rumors and him smiling his face and lying in his face, which leaves Pat to confronting Paul about what's the situation? What's going on? This is our team. I need you to know that we have built this chemistry. We have built this team to this 22 and 5 record. It's our time now. And it seems like he wants Jack to be off of this team. Ooh, we got some good stuff to talk about in a second here. But going back to, we see Spencer in result of kind of finding out about this, potentially him being traded. And then we know at this point in his career, he was blackballed from the NBA. He's bouncing from one team to the next. And now he might be traded again. Unfortunately, this results to him going back to drugs, which really kind of sucks. And this is something that he actually dealt with in real life. But going back to a question I have for you all, whose side are you on in regards to would you be Jack and want Pat Riley to be off the team and it's you and Paul? Or are you more on Pat Riley's team? You guys have been winning. There's some chemistry there. You don't want to pull the plug in the middle of the season. I know who I'm on, whose side I'm on. I'm on the side of history, which is Paul and Pat and inevitably what Pat becomes to the Lakers. But hey, let me know your thoughts in the comments as we move on to speaking of relationships. Jenny's got a lot on her plate and she's also dealing with her own kind of stuff. She's like physically hurting herself with this this lie she has to keep from her father. She has this moment where they're eating chicken when they're watching a the game and she sees her dad like around women and eating chicken and eating something else. She throws up, but it's in this moment that while they're cleaning this mess up, you see that Dr. Buss sees his mom, her hair kind of comes up, her wig comes up, and she he's starting to realize 
she's not doing too good. And he's going to learn about how she's actually doing a little bit later. But moving on from this scene to the next, it's time for the box office, baby. As Magic meets with Stern about the future of the NBA and the league, we're talking East versus West. We're talking City Kid versus the Farm Boy. But we're also talking from movie fans and Star Wars fans, Luke versus Vader, which I love that comparison there. And Magic talking about, I got the Force and you gonna, I'm your Jedi. I love the way that he phrased that. As the dark side or should I say Vader makes his way into the restaurant and I was a little bit critical on the portrayal of Bert last week and kind of the beef between two actors in regards to Magic versus Bert I didn't feel like it was all that played up like I would have liked it to be but this was a short and a short and a very small interaction I love this interaction more than I did last week when they're at the dinner table and Magic takes in you know taking shots at Bird and about getting beer and all that and and I really appreciate that scene more so than I did their scenes last week let me know what you all thought about the east versus west the country boy versus the city boy and luke versus vader let me know your thoughts on all that there and how you all felt about that performance as we cut to magic feels like he got a win versus bird this time on a personal ego situation but it's time to address the Rhonda situation as cookie confronts him about what he did with sleeping with her and um talk about Maury the father is yours you know who's the father she tells him that Rhonda is pregnant with his child which just a little history I don't know how the show's gonna play this but I don't know if Rhonda was ever in the situation in real life but I do know in the real world in reality of the situation Magic Johnson did get his girlfriend at the time Melissa Mitchell pregnant as they welcomed their first son Andre Johnson into the world on February 20th of 1981 so again we know this show likes to take its own creative of liberties but I'm just kind of curious on how this show will handle the Rhonda and if it's going to be revealed that that's his son or, or daughter or whatever the child's going to be but very curious on that but at that moment I'm like damn she putting all the laundry out there what you gonna do magic sleeping around with all these women let me know what you all thought about that moment before we move on I want to give credit where credit is due I have been very critical, if you all have been watching my reviews, the more dramatic scenes with Quincy Isaiah, I haven't been sold. But this moment when he finds out about Ron and the baby, I thought he really played that up as far as his more better dramatic moments in my opinion. Let me know how you all felt about that. But moving back on to the episode, I love these little moments when we see Magic getting these tips from the veterans, whether it's Kareem or in this particular uh, instance, he's talking to Doc and Doc is giving him some really great advice in regards to keeping a good woman to your side and what I also want to applaud the show about doing if you all notice a lot of our male figures have a good woman on their side whether it's Jerry West whether it's Pat Riley you know obviously we know Dr. Buss really values his mom's opinion there's a lot of examples in the show of how important the women are to their partners and I really appreciate that narrative that the show is showing and Cookie's a real one and if you all don't know in the real life situation Cookie is a real one for sure especially early 90s what went on with them again I, I imagine season two will explore that more but the the women and the, and the value of the women in the show has been really handled well in my personal opinion let me know what you all think about that as we move on back with Jack and Paul in the city of brotherly love we see that Paul is still recovering on this road trip to Philadelphia and Jack is not budging on Pat he hasn't told him yet and we see Jack tell him Paul, if you don't tell him he's no longer going to be a part of this team, I will go ahead and do it. As we see, he can't face the music. Um, I'm, I got to go to the bathroom. As while he's going to the bathroom, we see that Jack is watching the news. And this is where we see Pat Riley being interviewed by the media regarding how is Jack doing in his health. And let's just say he didn't really say the best things in regards to the uh, him coming back. And I love that kind of breaking of the fourth wall where they're kind of cursing each other. Again, I love when the show does that. But... Again, whose side are you on? Team Jack, Team Pat Riley and Paul? Let me know your thoughts on that as we cut to this leading to Paul being upset and actually confronting Pat Riley about his recent interview. And I am so torn right now. I don't know what scene is better. Was it last week's scene where Pat is talking to Paul in the bathroom with a cold shower? Say that you want to say that you want to be the coach or if it's this scene, because this is a scene that we actually see Paul 
fighting for what he believes in in a certain sense. He's confronting someone. He's not just being timid and running off to the bathroom, even though he eventually tries to do so. But let me know which scene you prefer more. I think I might take this scene because, again, we actually see Paul stepping up for himself as he's confronting Pat. And this is where they're having a conversation about what he really wants and what's the decision he wants to make and that this is their team. But unfortunately, we see that all this stuff that has been kept in this is affecting him like on a mental level and a physical level because he's now peeing blood. And again, remember the two characters that's dealing with truths and dealing with confronting their heroes. One, obviously, we know we're going to talk about magic going against Doc in a minute. But pay attention to what we got with Ginny in this episode and what we got with Paul in this episode. Their, you know, brotherly love, family love, family being the burden. One, we see what Jenny's going through and correlate that to what Paul's going through. Again, the writing in the show is fantastic. But moving back into the episode, a very genuine moment with Bus and his mom as he's talking to a nurse about how she's always been there for them. Again, the women being valued in the show and how he feels about his mom. And unfortunately, you know, he puts his hand, he said he wants to help out this nurse and his her son. We see Jenny walks in and sees, you know, this is yet another example of her father with another woman. And that's all she can see. Remember that episode a couple of weeks ago, like episode three or four when she was at the restaurant and we saw what her dad was doing to the woman at the Mexican restaurant in front of everyone. She always has that thought process of her dad. But again, her dad's her hero. But this is where she says, this is just enough, Dad. She's not helping you. She's here for grandmother. And this is where she spills the truth. And she confronts her hero and says, listen, grandma's dying. And we see how this is affecting Buzz. This is the first time all season that we actually see him break down. But also, he has to face the music. And we'll talk about that here in a second. But moving back into the conversation, now we see Paul role reversal. He's in the hospital. Paul asks Jack if he can allow him and Pat to finish out the season. And we see, and this is, I talk about Emmys. What a great moment here in regards to these two actors. We see that Jack is like, um, yeah. I know exactly who you are. And he calls him out, calls him every name in the book, calls him a, you know, a liar and calls him, you know, stabbing people in the back. But more importantly, he tells him, you know, why I picked you to be the coach from why I'm recovering It's because I never saw you as a threat in regards to he, he thought that Paul, he has his limits. He can never stretch out of those limits. So it kind of speaks to the relationship, the kind of big brother mentality that they, that those two characters had. Whew, what a great scene. Let me know what you all thought about that as we move on to time to play against your hero yet again. And I love how they kind of recreated the Doc kind of cradle dunk. Oh, Doc, oh. Uh, Irving, one of the greatest players of all the time. I love that moment there. But more importantly, I love this next moment that we're about to get into here. As we see that Pat Riley has lost his first game. And this is where we get that Jerry moment I was talking about earlier when he talks about Russell and Walt and how they would hang out outside of basketball. And he never understood why Russell would allow Walt, Walt to take him out to dinner, but then kill him on the court. Is this because he kind of theorizes that maybe Russell just wanted to be liked from his hero. And, you know, we see that game being and shown between Doc and Magic and this moment here where we see Jerry talking about I would have had more rings if I would have scored a little bit more points, but I would never take away this one ring for any happiness. I love that moment there. And we're going to tie that back when we wrap up the ending, but let's just go ahead and talk about it because it's such a great moment. If you want to win, you got to be a killer. And I think when I think of killers in basketball, I think of my GOAT, favorite player of all time, Kobe Bryant, obviously Michael Jordan, you know, even though he didn't win a ring, Allen Iverson is someone, obviously Magic, Bird. I mean, there's a laundry list of characters, but you got to be a killer. I love LeBron James, no disrespect to him, but he, and he has, you know, he has his own rings, right? He has four rings, but he is that, he's, I never see him as a killer. I'm kind of talking basketball now, and I always see LeBron, you know, teaming up with his friends, whether it's in Miami, obviously going back to Cleveland, now in the Lakers, him always trying to be the happy guy, being the nice guy. And that's why I always put Kobe above him because Kobe was that killer. But neither here nor there. I love that line. And we see how that is going to affect Magic moving forward, especially for the rest of the season. As we wrap up the rest of the episode here, we get, for the first time, Dr. Buss is breaking down after learning about his mom. And I think I thought it was going to be like he was just going to cry and have just a genuine sad moment with the nurse. Nah, that ain't Dr. Buss. As he takes this moment, as Dr. Buss has shown this season... 
he gets some milk. I'll just say that. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Very on uh, on par with what we got so far with the character in this season. But going back to, you know, we see Mrs. Buss and her and taking off her hair or putting on her hair and again dealing with, uh, you know, facing death. And we end the episode with Magic Johnson saying, you know what? He's still going to be a happy guy. Like, he's still Magic Johnson. He's still that type of person. But he also he tells Jerry West, I'm ready. I want to win. I need to win. I want to be that killer to win those championships. So, hey, what a great episode. Again, burden. Family could be a burden. Facing against your heroes. Confronting your heroes. You know, everything that we got with what that did to Jeannie Buss, what that did to Paul, the stuff we got with Pat Riley. You know, seeing Doc and the relationship of kind of, you know, trying to be a big brother to the little guy and also beating him up on the court. I love all that basketball stuff, but I love the character development, the arcs. This is one of my favorite shows so far this year. Eight episodes in, I can see this winning best dramatic series come Emmy season. We got two episodes left, and if it continues on this pace, I think it's going to be a winner. But hey, we got two episodes left. This is my favorite episode so far. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if episode nine is my favorite, but we'll get there come next week. But let me know again your pros, your cons, favorite moments, deeper meanings you took away from this episode. Let's discuss it all in the comments. If you stuck around to this point in this video, I can't thank you enough. Before you leave, make sure you like the review share the review leave your thoughts in the comments and of course subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell that way you don't miss any of my future content welcome back barry from a barry fans season three premiere is tonight so as you can see on the screen now come and join the community check out my barry review check out my other content we'll catch you all on the next video